Hello, my name is Ron Reisinger and I'm an orthodontist here in Southeast Texas. I've been in practice for 23 years. And today I'd like to show you how we use interproximal reduction for Henry Schein aligners. An assortment of items you may need for interproximal reduction include your lightning strips of different thickness, your quick strips of different thickness, your discs of different thickness and different cutting edges, your boon gauge for verification of IPR thickness, and your slow speed handpiece. Options for interproximal reduction depends on how much and where you need to slenderize. I like to use these lightning strips. They come in different coarseness. They're all 0.1 millimeter thick. So the most coarse is a blue one. So I use it to break the contact. There is a non-cutting surface there and you can use that to go right into the contact. And then you can slide it through and kind of wrap it around. That way you maintain the, the curvature and not create a flat surface in the interproximal. So if this is 0.1 millimeters thick, and you need 0.2 of IPR, you simply just need to double it over and it becomes 0.2. And then you slide both in the contact until you achieve a good thickness. And keep it rounded. And then if you want to verify that you achieve what you started out to do, you can go through, there's your 0.1. And you can see how that slides in. And if you want to see if you got 0.2, same thing. If it doesn't slide in, you need to do a little bit more. So you'll take your strip, double it over, and finish your work. And then take your point two and verify. There you go. Another option for interproximal reduction are these quick strips. It comes first uh, with a serrated edge so you can break the contact. And then it comes in different sizes of thickness to get to the achievable goal for your IPR. And these are single sided or double sided. So to use a quick strip, you hold it on the opposite edge of the blade and you get a finger rest and you line it up with the interproximal and you slide it through the contact and the initial one will break the contact and then you'll need a 0 0.7 millimeter and it will go through the same way and if your goal is to have 0.2 you will keep going until you get to that desired thickness. Never tilt or lean the strip because it will create an open contact causing food impaction when teeth are brought closer together. We'll go back and check with our boom gauge. See this is 0.1. Easy. Check 0.2. And perfect. So if I need a 0.3 or 0.4 millimeters of interproximal reduction, I will always use the disc. And the first step is you want to break the contact and I'll use an interproximal strip as we did before and break the contact and I'll double it over. And now I'm going to use it as a 0.2 strip and that will break the contact enough. And now I feel comfortable using a 0.3 double-sided disc to get the desired width. When I utilize a, an interproximal disc, I want to protect the patient's tongue, which you can't see, and also their lip, which you can't see. So even though I'm gonna have this guard, I wanna make sure that if anything slips, it's gonna get my fingers before it gets the patient. So I'm only wanting to cut hard tissue, not any soft tissue. Okay, and now you'll use a finger rest, so with the patient positioned properly and my 
disc position properly. I will slide it through. I'm going to go back with my strip to round off any edges. And then I'm going to measure. So now you want to check the boom gauge, get to the point three, and then I'm going to pass it through and it goes all the way down. When you're assessing a patient for the need of interproximal reduction, several things you want to look for. The health of the teeth, interproximal restorations, the health of the soft tissue, and you want to see the thickness of the enamel. And there's several ways to look at that. You know, you can look clinically at the thickness, if the patient has worn teeth or not, or the better way is to go and look at the radiograph. And you'll notice that the anterior teeth, as you remember, the enamel thickness in approximately is smaller than the posterior teeth. So you can probably get away with 0.3 to 0.4 IPR on the lower maybe 0.4 to 0.5 IPR on the upper anterior teeth, but you can gather up to a one millimeter of IPR in the posterior region. 